Hi, it's Daniela at California Carnivores, and today's video is all about what do sundew leaves look like when they die back? What's normal? What's natural? Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. I'm worried. What's normal for my plant? I'm here to help. So you might have noticed as you grow carnivorous plants that a lot of the leaves turn brown or black and die back really often. And that might be a little bit scary if you are used to growing a lot of other kinds of house plants like pothos that rarely lose a leaf. Carnivorous plants have a really high leaf turnover rate, and that's probably because they're doing a lot of work, right? They're eating, they're digesting, they're doing all of this work that the regular plants just don't do. So the leaves tend to die back with a little bit more frequency than say, again, a pothos. Most of the time it's totally normal and natural, but I'm gonna show you what normal and natural looks like so that you can look at it and feel a little bit at ease about your plant. And I'm gonna show you how you can take care of that. All right, let's look at my plants. Okay, so I have some Drosera capensis growing in this tray here, and I want to show you this because it really illustrates what's important to look for. So you can see all of these new leaves growing in here. There's one, and then even back here, there's another one. Sorry for my fingers. Right there. This is a super healthy plant. The crown and the growth point are really healthy. The plant is fine. If you look in there though, you can actually see there are some dead leaves. That's totally fine and normal, totally normal amount of turn. But let's take a look at some that have a more advanced level of leaf dieback so that you can see what else is normal on another kind of a plant. Here I have a little luscious tray of uh, fork leaf sundews and these tend to die back in a slightly different way. It's a little less noticeable. So as you can see here, look, that's a nice died back leaf. These do die back pretty frequently as well and you can just get in here can lightly pull them off although I often recommend scissors so you don't pull anything off you don't mean to if you pull too hard you can pull the whole plant out of the ground but in this all of this sometimes it's easy to lose those you know died back leaves so with a lot of these temperate plants I don't even bother to trim them because I just don't think that it adds anything to the plant to trim those leaves off and in nature no one's trimming them so remember it's not a requirement Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a sad plant. You know, as Damon says, you rarely see horticultural failures on these videos, but I wanna show you something that's gone horribly wrong with this poor Hercules. So in this pot, the other Hercules is doing beautifully, but this plant had a setback. I believe this one actually had aphids. We didn't treat it in time, and it's really died back hard. Now in this case, obviously, this is a sign that something is quite wrong with the plant. But one of the great things about many of the Drosera species is look, this little guy is actually still going to keep growing. So this is a plant I actually would come in with scissors, trim off all of that dead growth, and it will regrow. And you'll be shocked to see how beautiful it will look. It will look just as beautiful as this Hercules in no time. So this looks like a big tangled mat, but it's actually a bunch of pots of Drosera capensis that we love to see them grow up big, so we keep them around sometimes. And I wanted to show you this because this is really important. This, look at this, this plant is so actually huge that this big long stalk, look at this, is covered in these leaves. And this is how this would look in the wild. They turn into these tiny palm trees with all of these layers of leaves underneath. And this is totally, totally okay. You can trim all of these off, of course. And you know, sometimes that is good for pest management and to prevent any sort of problems with too much moisture buildup. But as you can see, this is actually a really happy little plant and there's a whole cluster of them that grow like this. So again, if you notice that your plant, especially your capensis, is losing leaves, this is the pattern that they're going to build. They're gonna grow upwards. All the leaves are gonna die back around that stem. New leaves are gonna grow and it's going to continue to grow upwards and you can see this is a happy, healthy plant. Your leaves are continuing to grow. So this is a totally normal and healthy plant. We've just allowed it to do exactly what it wants to do so it can be exactly as it would be in nature. More than likely, if you're a new sundew owner, you're gonna see much less dead leaves than I showed you on that last plant. You're probably gonna see something more like this, right? Just a few leaves at the base of the plant or you might start to see like leaves turn brown and die back. They always start right here at the tip and slowly die back. And keep in mind that plants always shock up a little bit when they're first shipped out the door from wherever they are to their new homes. And they also shock up as they adjust out to a new environment. So don't be upset if you notice that there are some blackened or browning leaves on your plant once you're acclimating it to your new environment. As long as you can see healthy new growth at the crown, it should be totally fine and you don't really have to worry. But if you start to see all of the leaves die back very, very hard, or if you see 
some sort of warped or pitted leaf shape to the green growing leaves, um, that would be an indicator that there's actually something much more serious going on. But again, don't give hope, up hope because so many sundews will just regrow from the roots. I quickly wanted to touch on the pygmy sundews. Pygmy sundews, of course, do lose their leaves as well. They will build them all up along the stalk. The little roundy ones will slowly build up and up and up on a little tuft of brown leaves. I do not recommend trimming these. They don't need to be trimmed in nature. Those uh, leaves actually help protect them from heat. And they're so tiny, you're really likely to have an accident and trim back the stem, which is a tragedy beyond tragedy. So I just like to let them be totally natural. I think that's a better way to allow these pygmy sundews to be because they have actually developed a lot of their leaf browning in order to protect themselves from heat. And that's a really important thing. Let's take a look at this Scorpioides that I have that's really interesting. This pot of Scorpioides is quite old. And look at this, look how tall these stalks are. And all these leaves have died back along those stalks. Now they do come off, but if I was to trim those, they'd honestly, I think, look a little bit weird. Like when you um, take a cat to the groomer and the cat comes home with like a lion cut and it looks really weird and kind of upset. I just think that they look better like this and it does offer protection in the heat for the plant. Rosetta sundews like these are also going to lose leaves and they're gonna die back, but they're gonna be a little bit different because they're gonna actually be tucked under the main plant. And so you often aren't really gonna see them and the plant's actually gonna grow up and up and up and get taller and taller on this little stacked patty of dead leaves. Again, I think it looks weird if you trim that too much. So personally, I don't recommend it, but of course you're more than welcome to do it. This little browning of the crown, that's totally normal this time of year on many of the um, rosetted sundews. There's nothing really wrong with this plant. It's just part of the time of year and the cycle of life for this plant. All right, I hope that was really helpful for you. I know it was like a really quick little guide, but we get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions about sundews and what their leaves look like and is this normal and oh my gosh I'm really worried. So I know I just did a video about Saracenia and what their browning can look like, what their pictures can look like as they brown in the summer and I was thinking that maybe next I should do one on Venus flytraps or Pinguicula. So comment below and let me know what you think I should do next or if there's any other little guides you could use about what is normal in carnivorous plants because I think they're a little bit different than our regular house plants or vegetables or landscape plants and so sometimes it can be a little scary and so that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. Comment below, let me know what else I can do. All right, happy growing.